mug of the day. What's up, guys? Uh, this is Aaron coming to you back with my second vlog ever. This is a great week to do it. It's NFL Combine week, and uh, well, the Combine's over. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that before I get into some of the things I've been thinking about this week. Um, Isaac Samalo was the only Oregon State Beaver to be in the Combine, and I was really excited about that. I thought he actually did really well. He um, isn't on anybody's draft boards or anything like that, which is, I think, the place to be, honestly. Um, I uh, didn't get to see either of his 40s because the NFL Network just didn't record that. Uh, they went to a commercial break during the two times that Isaac um, was running. But what I'm really excited about uh, for Isaac is uh, I know him, and he's my buddy, and um, I, I've done a couple workouts with him and stuff like that, and he's just incredibly strong. He had a huge... Um, advantage growing up with his dad being the defensive line coach for Oregon State. And uh, when, I, when I was there, uh, Coach Joe was the, the offensive line coach. Uh, and probably just as big of an advantage is the fact that he was able to hang out with Mike Cavanaugh, uh, who was my offensive line coach. And um, if you start for Mike Cavanaugh for at least four years, you're, you're going to the NFL and you'll, and you'll play in the NFL. Uh, that was the story for Mike Remmers. Uh, Super Bowl with the Panthers had a, had a really rough game against uh, Vaughn Miller, um, but Vaughn made everybody Super Bowl champs. Uh, Vaughn made everybody look like that this year, uh, which on a side note, really excited the Broncos signed Vaughn Miller uh, and our, or in our in signings with him. Uh, they franchise tagged him and uh, kind of worked out a deal that way. So I'm really excited for the future uh, next year. But uh, back to Isaac, I, I'm really excited with the stuff that he did at the Combine because uh, when you're under Coach Cav, not only do you learn um, an NFL-style offense, you're also learning the technique. Um, basically, when you go to the NFL, and I'm, I'm speaking from the guys who did it, I obviously did not, but when you go to the NFL, there's not a whole lot more that you can learn in the sense that you can uh, teach. Uh, what we learned at Oregon State and the offense that we ran and the protections that we learned and how to do those things and the technique that Coach Cab taught. There's really nothing more to teach. So uh, the offensive linemen that come out of Oregon State and now that are going to be coming out of Nebraska, which is where Coach Cab is now, um, are game ready uh, for the NFL. There's speed of play and some adjustments in regards to that, and that, that's stuff that's hard to tell. Um, but outside of that, as far, uh, as far as what you learn mentally, you're ready to go. So... Um, Big Isaac, big eye, uh, did well. He's undersized initially, but his technique was so good at the combine. Uh, his pad level, uh, in football terms, what, what we refer to as pad level, um, he kept his hips down. Uh, he was low in the drills that he did. One of his best drills, I thought, was uh, what we called mirror dodge at Oregon State, where you have uh, a rabbit, which is a guy um, kind of running back and forth. And then you're in your offensive lineman stance and you're um, trying to mirror him, uh, hence the mirror dodge. And I thought Isaac did awesome with that. He uh, just everything looked really easy. There's kind of a distinction between um, you can tell when someone's good at something, whether based on how hard it looks for them. And there, I think there's a lot of validity to looking at that just in life, but um, especially in athletics. And so uh, watching Isaac go through the drills, it was really second nature to him. There wasn't a whole lot of thought that he was putting into it. Um, so I'm really excited to see uh, where Isaac goes in the draft. I don't really care too much where he goes, what round he goes. He could even go undrafted. Someone's going to get a really good deal with him. Uh, especially with him flying under the radar. In fact, I could make a really good argument for why it's a lot better that he's flying under the radar. Um, uh, good players have a history of uh, going to bad teams because of how the NFL draft works. Um, and a lot, I think a lot of times their career doesn't go as well as they would have hoped. So for me, I'm really excited for Isaac uh, being under the radar. I thought he had a good showing. Um, Mike Mayock and Rich Eisen on the NFL Network uh, were talking about him after some of his drills. Um, he also has an advantage. Play, he played all uh, three positions on the offensive line at Oregon State. So uh, he's, he's got the head of a center. He can play at center, uh, but he also played guard and tackle. So he was real. they called him a Swiss Army knife. So they, he 
uh, really is a, a versatile player. Um, and so I'm really excited to see where he goes. And and, I, and mark my words, he, he will be good and he will play very well and have a solid career, uh, barring an injury, uh, God forbid. Um, but he will do really, really well in the NFL. So Isaac, good luck. I'm really excited for you, man. And um, I will be a, a big fan of yours. I'm, I'm hoping you don't go to a team <laughs> like the Titans or um, someone who is hurting desperately on the offensive line. I hope you can kind of get around some veterans and uh, have quick success. Um, so one of the things that we talked about in our staff meeting yesterday, and this is kind of why I wanted to do a vlog today, um, do my second vlog we were talking about our weekly email that we send out um, as a church and uh, some of the information and the content that's in there. And right now we've been, uh, we use a service called MailChimp and um, right now we, it's, it's free for us. Uh, so we're not paying. Um, I think there were a couple others that we looked at where we'd have to pay right away. But right now, because of how many people we're sending out to each week, it's not enough to qualify for where we have to pay. So, MailChimp has been an awesome service. Um, the design of it and um, how you can lay your email out and the things that you can do with your email, we really like. Um, but how we, the content that we've been filling it with um, is starting to get repetitive. Not that the, con the content changes uh, pretty much every week, but the layout and kind of how people are receiving it. Uh, it seems to be repetitive. And so um, I would love your input on this for those of you who watch this, um, potentially even people from our church who uh, are going to end up watching this. I, um, I'm curious to see your guys' feedback with the weekly email and uh, kind of what you guys think and what you're looking at. But what was brought up at staff meeting was potentially moving into something where um, we do like, um, I have it up on my board back over here, but uh, Tim Ferriss does an email and he basically just puts in his five thoughts for the week, uh, things like books that he's reading, things that he's watched, um, blog articles that he's read, just ideas that he has. And so he just does like a, a, a top five going into the weekend. And so it's in bullet point form so people can just look at it really quickly and not have to read like a really long email. Uh, right now, we have our main our main body uh, is written by our pastor James, and he um, it kind of explains what's the topic for the weekend of his sermon and kind of prepares people mentally in that way as they read it, so they kind of know what we're going to be talking about and discussing on Sunday, um, which which is great and which is good. Uh, but what we're kind of wrestling with and trying to figure out is. Is there too much reading and do people have time to go through our email? And I think that that's a real question and uh, a question that we need to answer so that we can become more effective uh, with our ministry and with um, getting people to want to see what's going on on Sunday. And just, I think, be more practical in helping people. I think uh, a lot of people wonder what it's seeing James as a leader or seeing myself as a leader or when I am looking at leaders um, that I follow or I listen to their uh, podcasts or read their blogs, what I really enjoy is those kind of quick bullet points. Like what are they doing in their daily lives? What are they looking at? What are they reading? Kind of where's their head, where's their head at and what are they thinking about? And so potentially moving to something like that where we just, do a quick bullet point style thing. And James kind of has stuff that he's reading this week or stuff that he's watching um, is something that we're entertaining as a staff uh, and maybe still doing a weekly email, but changing the content of the email. What we found is that actually doing a weekly email is incredibly effective. Um, we, have a, a really good open rate for what's cool about MailChimp is they have analytics and they have things that you can look at to kind of see where you're at. And so the, the I think they have a separate category for religion and um, the we're well above the open rate average. So we can see who opens it, We can which we don't really care about. We care to see kind of how many people are opening it and the, and what are they clicking on. There are links in the email that we put in there. It's cool because people can see our, uh, there's a wharf letting me know I have a text message. <laughs> um, but it's cool because 
people can uh, follow our stuff on on social media and they can kind of see where the grove is uh, they can go to our website and things like that but i'm not sure how much people care about that stuff so um, if you want to respond to this and uh, comment you could comment about the nfl combine too i don't really care uh, but i am curious to know when you follow people or when you're looking at uh, people's uh, blogs or um, anything that's in written text that you don't want that you don't have time necessarily to read a whole article are bullet points helpful do you care about um, your emails kind of just having headings with uh, quick things that you can uh, take and potentially use or look at? Um, so let me know. Give me some feedback on that. That'd be awesome. Uh, I am really excited uh, about doing this vlog. It's cool to share my thoughts with you. The first one had really good response from people. They thought it was cool that I kind of stepped out and did this. Um, so I'm going to try and do it as much as I can when I have a topic to talk about. Uh, sports are obviously easy, but um, I kind of want some more uh, meat to it as well. So thanks for watching. And uh, the third one will come out maybe next week. Who knows?